Okay, those of you who are taking the thesis seminar, I wanted to spend a few minutes on formatting and how you can go about formatting some of your text. As many of you are finalizing your literature review, you are uh, no doubt uh, looking at your text using the template that we discussed in class. If you go to classwork and if you go to week one, you should find your files under writer docs. I'm going to go ahead and open up the template that I shared the first week of class and we'll open up here the folder. All of you started with the same template so I'm going to work with that same template. You'll, you'll be obviously opening up your own document. Okay so we've just completed week four. We're starting week five of a thesis seminar and next week will be our deadline. Next Friday, March 1st, will be our deadline to finalize the literature review. Now, much of the template here that I'm sharing with you, don't feel that you need to change or make any uh, additions or modifications to those pages. We're basically only focused on the thesis seminar section. So let me scroll down and show you again what we're referring to. Again, these are the same sections that we've been dealing with in our face-to-face -face tutoring sessions each week. But basically, this is the section here that we need to be concerned about with our literature review. Remember that the introduction, we're going to do that at the end of uh, at the end of the semester. So don't worry about filling out or completing the introduction paragraph. The only exception will be the thesis statement. So your thesis statement should appear here at the end, or actually right here where I've highlighted the document, just before your first section. So again, one sentence thesis statement should be here, and then you'll have your first heading, and so on. So you'll notice here that the text is double-spaced. And the original document, the original template that you all had to begin with, showed something like this. So the idea here is to work as much as possible in the template and if you do that, your, your formats should be just fine. So if you'll notice, I'm typing new text. Again, bear with me, my computer's awful slow here. So I'm typing in new text. Notice that my text already is Times New Roman font size 12 and the color of the text is black. So this is by uh, default. This is how your text should, should look. And here, this is not the best example here. Again, I'm just trying to put some arbitrary text here. So let me All right. So you get the idea here. You've got your text and Let's say that you finalize or you finish one paragraph, you hit enter. Notice that I already have my indentation of a half an inch, and I can begin typing. The problem uh, that sometimes we have uh, with regard to formatting is whenever we copy and paste over from another document. So if you're working in a Word document, for example, on your computer, on a local computer, and then you copy and paste and upload to Google Docs, many times you'll have issues, uh, you'll have formatting issues. You may have a different font. You may have a different color. Sometimes I'll see gray text, which indicates that text has been copied and pasted over. So if you are doing that, I, again, ideally it would be best, I think, to work directly into Google Docs, whether it's on your tablet, your phone, or a computer, uh, obviously one that has a connection to the Internet. But if that is a challenge, if uh, having access to the Internet is an issue, that's fine, you can work on a local document or a Word document even, but just be aware that when you copy and paste it up to this document, this Google Docs, that you may have to go back and check the formatting. Now another thing I want to draw your attention to here is the spacing between the paragraphs. So let me continue with my example in the second paragraph in this first section. And we'll wait, we'll wait, we'll wait. Eventually, it's going to appear. Okay, so I've got my second paragraph. Okay, and just imagine several lines here in the second paragraph. 
But this is what I'd like for you to notice here is the spacing between paragraphs. This is equal spacing between paragraphs. Notice the spacing between the first heading and the first paragraph. Also equal spacing. So this is what we need to be careful about, especially when we're copying and pasting. If you're just working in the document, in Google Docs, you don't have to change anything. By default, it should be just fine. But here, if you go to spacing, this is what you need to check. Sometimes... In fact, if you're working in Word, I can guarantee that by default, Word also automatically adds space between paragraphs, which would look something like this. And so if this is the case, you need to make sure that you go into line spacing and remove any extra space between paragraphs so that, again, you have equal spacing between headings and paragraphs and between the paragraphs themselves. All right, so make sure that your text is correctly formatted. Make sure that your headings, level 2 headings, which should divide up your main sections of your literature review into two to four sections, is on its own line. It's in bold. Main words are capitalized. Okay, so this is level 2, this is level 2, this is level 2. Some of you have only two sections in your literature review. In those cases, you might find it necessary, in fact, probably will find it necessary to have a level 3 heading. A level 3 heading is part of the paragraph, so notice that this is indented into the paragraph. It actually begins the paragraph. It's in bold. Only the first word is capitalized, and it ends in a period. Your next text here, your next, uh, the next thing you'll have right after the heading within the same paragraph is your topic sentence. So your topic sentence will go here, and you'll continue writing out your paragraph as normal, following the meal plan. So here we have level three heading in the case of those of you who will have two sections. If you have three or four main sections as level two headings, then you probably will not need a level three heading. Okay, so the only thing here left to discuss at this point, because we're still not ready for the method, go ahead and leave this text as is, because uh, these are the headings you're probably going to use when you develop your method. Your results section, results and, discussion, uh, results and discussion section we'll talk about later. But here, make sure that you are adding your references as you go along and use the examples that I've provided to guide you in the formatting according to APA for the references that you will include here. So single space, this is different than the text that we talked about above. What I would do is make sure that all of the text is single-spaced and then force a double space between the, re the references. So remember, it's single-spaced within each reference, double-spaced between each reference. Notice that it's reversed. Uh, the indentation is reversed. So the first line is all the way to the left. All subsequent lines within the same reference are over a half an inch. Again, use your slider bars, as I've indicated here, to make your changes, make your indentations. The easiest thing to do is select the entire text and then move your slider bars accordingly. Be very careful in the formatting of your references. Uh, watch for capitalization, indentation, and also italics. Spacing as well, punctuation, commas. Again, uh, I've tried to pro provide enough example here, or enough examples, here to uh, guide you. Most of you are going to be using primary research articles. Some of you may have book chapters and books. Probably those are going to be the only three types, um, perhaps thesis or, or dissertations. I think some of you are using those. But remember, no websites. No websites. You can get published articles online and online databases, but please avoid websites. So I hope this helps. Again, be careful with formatting. We'll talk later about appendix, uh, the appendix section and uh, the other sections here. But leave the template as is. I tried to provide a guide here uh, to follow to make it easier for you to adhere to APA whenever you're drafting your thesis paper. So if you do have any specific questions or issues about formatting, feel free to email me or come by my office.